Today I'm sharing how to make homemade citrus scented vinegar three different ways. Hi sweet friends, my name is Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest. This channel is all about living the simple life by cooking from scratch, making home remedies, and creating a cozy home with charming thrift store finds. So if you're like me and you like living the simple life, be sure to subscribe to my channel and click on the little notification bell below that'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Well, I love making homemade vinegar. And for years, I would just make it with apple scraps and make the traditional apple cider vinegar. But then I learned from my friend Heidi over at Rain Country homestead how to make vinegar out of pretty much anything and it's so wonderful because you never have to throw anything out even if it's at a point where you can't really do much with it make vinegar with it and then I have another friend named Alicia who has the YouTube channel Moat Cottage and she showed a very interesting way to make scented homemade vinegar and I'm gonna give it a try today now the scented vinegars that I'm making today are all going to be citrus based, but you really can do this with pretty much any fruit or vegetable and even plants and herbs and flowers. Uh, it's really endless, but citrus is nice this time of year because it's in season and we have lots of it here in Texas. Uh, I can buy a big 10 pound bag of oranges for four or five dollars. So we, we wind up having a, and eating a lot of citrus. Um, but in any event, what I did was whenever we ate oranges and we peeled them, I would just have a jar in the fridge and I'd throw the peels right in there. And after the jar would get to be about half or two thirds full, I would get ready to make vinegar with it. And it couldn't be easier. All you need to do is add a quarter cup of sugar, that's it, <laughs> and then cover it with water. And you just want to go up about maybe three quarters of the way. You don't want to go right to the rim because this will bubble and ferment and it will uh, rise up a little higher. So I usually just kind of play it by ear, but that's good. Yeah, leaving about two inches or so uh, from the rim here. And the next thing you want to do is find something to stir it with. I love using these chopsticks. It makes it very easy. And I know a number of you who've seen me make vinegar in other videos have asked me, where did I get such a long wooden chopsticks? And to be honest with you, we've just had them for years, but I did find them uh, on Amazon. So I'll put a link below if you want to investigate and learn more about them. And so all you do is just stir this around a bit, pushing it down, just helping the sugar dissolve, nothing fancy. And that's it. And then the next thing you do is just take a coffee filter or a little piece of clean cloth that you might have and take a little rubber band or some string and just put it on like this. And what's going to happen over the next few days is this is going to start to ferment. The sugar uh, that we added plus the sugar in the, in the little bit of fruit that's on the rinds. Oh, that's Obi. You all know Obi. She's barking. <laughs> And as I was saying, the bacteria will feed on the sugar and it'll start to ferment and it'll start to bubble up and you'll begin to make vinegar. And what you'll want to do is every day for about 30 days or so, you're going to want to just stir things around a little. And as it bubbles up, you'll find that maybe after the fourth or fifth day, it's just really calmed down a bit. And at that point, I'll often add another quarter cup of sugar to give it the bacteria a little more to eat, another boost. And I find that that's the perfect ratio. You might be wondering why I don't just add a half a cup of sugar right in the beginning. I've tried that, but it doesn't work as well. It actually just becomes kind of a sweet syrupy mess and doesn't seem to want to ferment. Oh my goodness, Obi's having such a day. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to go give her a treat. Well, Obi's very happy. I gave her a kale, salmon, and turmeric treat. And then you just put this on, let it breathe, stir it every day, and then after about 30 days or so, you can check it. Now, your nose is going to be able to tell you if it's starting to smell like vinegar. You'll still smell the citrus aroma, but you'll also smell a vinegary aroma. And if you want to be doubly sure that it's ready to be vinegar, you can use these little uh, strips that are sold. Um, you can find them, you know, sometimes at the drugstore in the pharmacy section, 
uh, or they also have them on Amazon. I'll put a link below in case you're looking for them. And all I do is just take a little piece like this and you're gonna dip it into your vinegar mixture. And if it's like under four or 4.5, it's pretty acidic. I actually like to go all the ways to 3.0. And then you can use this, then you want to strain out the solids and then decant uh, the vinegar. And you can use it for salad dressings, you can use it for cleaning, you can use it for a hair rinse, whatever you want. I don't recommend it for canning though. Um, if you're going to can, you're going to want to use the vinegar from the store because you'll, that vinegar is exact in terms of its acidity. And when you're canning, you need to know exactly uh, what the acidity level is. So that's making homemade citrus scented vinegar with just the orange peels. And so I'm going to put this to the side now. And the next we're going to talk about is making a citrus, citrus scented vinegar with the actual fruit. And again, if you want it, you know, you can use any fruit. But since citrus is in season, I'm doing it with citrus. And the reason that I, I picked these particular oranges to use, I had some that just were starting to really dry out. You know, I had so many oranges and you know, as you can see, it's kind of all misshapen and all, but they're not moldy or anything, just kind of really dried out. And so what I did was, and I'll just move this out of the way so you can see, I just take the orange and really just cut it anyway. It's not, it's not an exact science, but I like to cut each half into uh, six pieces. Just way, that way is just some, you know, room for it to really, to let the bacteria really get all those juices uh, to, to start to ferment. And then again, I'm just gonna do the same thing. I add, this is sort of like, you know, yes, there's fruit and the sugar and all of that, but this is the insurance policy. It really does help. And then the next thing we're gonna do is just like with the peels, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add water. You know, like I said, about three quarters of the way, we'll leave about two inches or so from the rim because it will start to uh, bubble up as it ferments. Then we just take our uh, chopstick or whatever you use to stir and get in there, get that sugar mixed. Then we're gonna take another coffee filter. We're gonna put that lid on, put the rubber band on. Again, if you want to use cloth, you certainly can. And then every day for 30 days, take this off, give it a good stir. After a couple of days, you know, three or four days, four or five days, it, it really varies. If you notice that it started to ferment and become bubbly and then is calming down, add another quarter cup of sugar, give it a good stir, and then that's that. Just keep stirring it every day for another 30 days. At 30 days, check it with your pH strip or just check it with your nose. If it smells vinegary, give it a little taste. If it's good and you like it, then it's fine. So now we'll put this aside and I'll show you the third way to make a citrus scented vinegar that's really easy. Oh, and I just wanted to add, as with the peels, once it reaches the point of being a vinegar that you like, you're just gonna strain out the solids and add them you know, to whatever you want, the compost pile or whatever. You're gonna strain out the solids and then decant your vinegar in whatever type of glass container you wanna keep it in. And when you decant it into your container after you've strained out the solids, you'll just wanna put some kind of lid on it like that. And that can just be stored in your pantry at room temperature. You don't need to put this in the fridge. Now this third way of making citrus scented vinegar is what I saw Alicia do over at Moat Cottage. And I will link in the iCards and in the, in the description below, both to Heidi's channel and Alicia's channel so you can see how they make vinegar. Now this is technically a homemade citrus scented vinegar, but it's not homemade vinegar like the other two. This is starting with distilled white vinegar. Now in here I've got mandarin oranges and the, the peels from them. And all we do is just pour the vinegar into this jar with the peels and we let it sit for 30 days or so. And the vinegar will take on the citrus smell. So even though you're starting with real vinegar, and this is just a distilled white vinegar, 
over time it's going to take on a lovely citrus smell and it'll be terrific for salad dressings or cleaning. It'll be just delightful for cleaning if you like citrus scented cleaning products. So we'll just go ahead and pour this vinegar right over the top of these peels and then we'll put a lid on and set it aside for about 30 days. And we can just go right up to the rim is fine in this case. And there you have it, three homemade citrus scented vinegars. If you'd like more information about making homemade vinegar, be sure to subscribe to my channel and then click on this video over here where I show you how to make vinegar from strawberry scraps. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.